beneficiary form for your self-directed IRA. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. On today's ad bits, best ways, tips for completing a beneficiary form for your self-directed IRA. This is an important podcast. It's not the most exciting, but it's important because the beneficiary form is the form that dictates who is the primary beneficiary of your IRA upon your death. So generally, it's a very simple form. You're going to obviously have to put in your name, your account number, some basic info, and then you're just going to need to designate a primary and contingent or second uh, beneficiary. So generally, you have two choices. You can have a one primary, two primaries, three primaries, four primaries, and you can break it up in any percentages you wish, right? You can do 50%. Uh, let's say you're not married, you have two kids, you can do 50-50. Or if you're married, in the most common way, to complete a beneficiary form is you have your surviving spouse as the sole beneficiary, as the primary. Now, contingents are, God forbid, you pass and your spouse also passes, whether simultaneously or if you forget to update your beneficiary form, then the IRA will fall to the contingents, which could be kids or other family members, charities, trusts, whatever the case may be. So this is a very personal decision. Um, this is totally up to you. There's no right or wrong. But what I will say is if you are in a community property state, you're going to need to get your spouse's consent if you want to have someone other than your spouse serve as primary. So if I live in California or a different community property state and I want to have my son or son and daughter or two sons be my primary and my spouse is still alive, I will need to get my spouse to consent to allow for someone that's not him or her to be the primary beneficiary. Technically, if you're not in a community property state, you don't have to, although some beneficiary forms will require uh, a spouse, no matter where the spouse resides, to designate and agree, consent to have someone other than them serve as the primary. So again, there's no right or wrong. The common approach is you have your spouse as primary, and then you have your kids as contingents. If you have no kids, then obviously other family members or charities are uh, also very common. Some tips. Number one is your beneficiary form is super important. Okay, I can't tell you, I've been practicing tax law 21 years. I've seen it over and over where, God forbid, if someone has an IRA, they pass and they're divorced in the last couple of years and they don't update their beneficiary form. And now their ex spouse is the primary beneficiary and is getting the IRA. And the new spouse is not very happy about that. So first tip, update your form every year at least. Just take a quick peek at it. You can find it on our, if you're a client of IRA Financial, it's on our app, on our website. Just go to additional documents. You can check out the form uh, or reports. Uh, you can check it out if you want to update it. If you have a change in your life, uh, a divorce, separation, God forbid, a death, something else, material uh, occurs that that is going to impact who will be a primary or contingent you want to update the form why because the beneficiary form will trump your will yeah it will i've seen it there's case law if your beneficiary says that your primary is your ex spouse and your will says all your assets go to your new spouse from the ira standpoint guess what the ira is going to your ex spouse Okay, so it's super, super important to update your beneficiary form. It literally takes 25 seconds. Okay, you go in, you change your primary beneficiary to whoever you wish, and you're done. If there's nothing to do, that's good. Just take a quick peek at it. Obviously, if nothing's happened in your life, and you know that you have your spouse, your kids as your beneficiary, and you're still good with that, then you probably don't have to revisit the form. But I think it's helpful to. Second tip is keep a copy of the beneficiary form with your will. Um, I also think it's important to provide instructions to your heirs, especially the trustee of your estate, executor of your estate, where your assets are. Hey, I have IRAs at these spots. Hopefully they're all at IRA Financial, but if not, I get you. Um, this is what you need to do. Here's my will. Here's the IRA beneficiary form. Here's contact numbers. Here's websites. Whatever the case may be, set a path. I, 
I've experienced it. I've lost my mom and my dad. My dad was super, super organized. And you know, unfortunately, he did have cancer, so we kind of knew what the end game was. And he was realistic and uh, you know, super helpful. Um, and it was a difficult conversation, multiple conversations to have, but he's basically like, listen, this is what is gonna happen. Uh, this is where my will is. This is where all my retirement accounts are. This is where my bank accounts are. These are all my passwords, my emails, or this is who you need to call even down to, hey, um, this is who I wanna sell the house when I go. So I think it's important to plan. Obviously, if your kids are 12 years old, you don't need to include them, but you wanna share this information with someone. But most importantly, keep the beneficiary form close to the will, same uh, safe, uh, lockbox, wherever it is, and have instructions, whether it's a spouse or a family member, whoever you trust the most, and also, you may want to have copies to your accountants or, or trust in the state's lawyer, just so people know where everything is. Unfortunately, you know, we have 25,000 clients and it happens uh, more than we wish, especially during COVID, where, where people died. Okay, and we have to deal with family members. And unfortunately, we got into some uncomfortable situations. In fact, I actually had to serve as an expert witness in, in a beneficiary form slash divorce setting where the form wasn't updated and it was a mess. Okay, so please, 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 if there's a change in your life from a marital standpoint, uh, a family situation, God forbid, um, someone's sick, disabled, God forbid, passes, update your form, not just your will, update your form. Your, your will and your beneficiary form should mirror each other. The primary should be the same for IRAs and um, other assets. If, if you wish otherwise, that's okay. Just know that your will... Uh, will not trump your beneficiary form with respect to your IRA. Obviously, your will will dictate other terms with respect to your non-IRS. So those are the big tips. Update the form each year. Uh, take a quick peek at it. If you have a change in your uh, marital life or family life, update the form immediately. And then number two, um, you let people know where your assets are. You don't have to tell them the amount. I get it right? You have kids, maybe they're in their 20s, 30s. <laughs> you want them to be hungry. You want them to um, support themselves and, and not have to rely on you and not uh, be as aggressive as they need to be in business because they feel like they're going to uh, inherit some cash. But you should say whoever will be your executor, whether it's kids or spouse, hey, my IRAs are here. My bank accounts are here. These are my assets are here. Or I have investments in these two funds or three real estate projects. Let people know. And if you don't want to share it now, map it out. Have it typed out nice and cleanly and um, in an organized fashion on a document and have it in the safe with instructions near your will uh, and beneficiary forms. Um, and it's just super important. I, I lived through it, unfortunately. It was super helpful how organized my dad was. It, it was super tough, but we didn't scramble. Like my sister and I knew what we needed to do. We knew where the retirement accounts are, where bank accounts were, and there were no issues. Um, and again, I remember um, telling when, when my mom passed away, my dad you know, told us, hey, like I'm changing the beneficiary forms. You guys are now the beneficiaries of uh, all our retirement accounts, right? My Dad was the primary for my mom. My mom passed, so then it went to my dad, and now my dad knows he's pretty sick. So he's telling us, hey, I'm moving it to you guys. Um, so it's just real conversations. Um, they suck to have, but as long as your kids are old enough, um, you should have it with them or whoever your heirs are because it's better to be organized, thoughtful, and prepared than the alternative, which is mad scramble. and um, extra costs and fees to lawyers and accountants uh, and stress when you are trying to locate assets. So beneficiary form, one pager, takes literally 25 seconds to complete. There's no right or wrong who your primary contingents are. It's, it's you, it's your, it's your money, right? Whether you wanna give it all to charity or give it all to your spouse or your kids or your aunt, your uncle, your dog, your trust, like it's your money. You can do whatever you want, just know most people do primaries as spouse, contingent kids or, or other family members, but that's that's just a common approach. You don't necessarily you know, have to do that. So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. I know it wasn't the most exciting topic, but it's important. It applies to anyone that has an IRA, whether it's at 
you know, Fidelity, a Vanguard, a Schwab, or IRA Financial, whether you have traditionals or alts, you're going to need the beneficiary form. That is part of your IRA package. You need to complete the beneficiary form. And that's something you should do your best to complete and um, make sure it's updated. And obviously, if there is a change in your marital or family life, you should immediately update that form along with your will and keep those documents together along with instructions to your executor or your heirs in terms of where all your assets are. Uh, otherwise, thanks for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, we've got an amazing channel. We drop three to four videos and three podcasts a week. So if you haven't subscribed, you definitely should. You're missing out on really great, great content if you are interested in self-directed retirement uh, related topics. Other than that, appreciate you spending some time here today. Have an amazing rest of your day and uh, take care.